Ah, oh, you can hear it. Yeah. You always find the fucked up songs, Lee, goddammit. <laughs> no, that's cool. It's, it's, yeah, that was I a little slower. You like the yeah, slower I, version? I, I grew up playing this version, yeah. But, and, and, and I really love the feel of it because this is like a 70s vibe, which is what I grew up playing, you know, 70s music, you know? So it's got that really classic rock vibe to it. So by the time we re-recorded the song, um, the record company wanted more modern. So, you know, it has all, all these more of an 80s feel to it, but still is an awesome blues song. So what know? should I search for the newer version? Uh, it's called Slip of the Tongue or, or Steve Vai. It's Steve Vai, uh, Full for Your Loving, because Steve uh, playing guitar on that one. On the microphone, Mr. Rudy Sarzo, the legendary Rudy Sarzo, Lee Syatt. What's happening, you bad hey, buddy, motherfucker? I think I have it. You want me to play it? Yeah, yeah, yeah just play? little differences. We're just fucking <laughs> a little shout out, a little love for Stevie Vai. He's going Steve through some Vai hard times Stevie right Vai. now. Right? He's going through a cancer right now. So. Steve Vai? No. What? Somebody's got cancer. I thought it was Stevie Vai. Maybe I'm oh, wrong. No, but no. if he is, I hope I just, not. I mean, yeah, I just want to wish him yeah. good luck. He's a dear that. friend, you know. And, you know, he really takes great care of himself. He's a vegetarian, vegan. As a matter of fact, when we were playing together in um, Whitesnake, uh, he turned me on. And I was a vegetarian for five or six years. You know, he turned me on into. Uh, not you know food combining or not combining foods you know for right? in the morning just having juice and not combining your carbs with your proteins you know so your food digests better and stuff like that so he really takes care of himself you know more than anybody I know so maybe it's not him I, I'm happy you're not a vegan no more <laughs> Cubans are not vegans you know what I'm saying? <laughs> They try to slow it down a little bit. Like when a Cuban gets a heart attack, he'll switch it to turkey meat. Like I'll switch the fucking picadilla to turkey meat, but that's as bad as I get. That's his fuck that shit. What's up, Lisa? How was your weekend, buddy? It was good. I, uh, you know, what I'm doing a lot now. Uh, I, I've been on a diet for a few mo- uh, for like six months, and my girlfriend and I are getting sick of it. But I've lived in LA for like four years, and I've never really left the valley. Like other than working down in Santa Monica, I never left. So we took the train down to Japantown or Little Tokyo in downtown. We, we we walked for like 20 minutes. We found this like revolving sushi bar, like the place that it goes around on the conveyor belt. We walked around there. We went to a couple Japanese bakeries and stuff. It was a lot of fun. Something different. Yeah, you yeah. got to get out of the valley sometimes. Because I, I mean, I've lived here for years. And I've, I haven't, I've seen like less than 1% of L.A. So it, just, it was fun doing that. You get I stale. Know. I yeah. get stale. I get really stale. That's why I like fucking around going to Long Beach for the last fight. Because I'll sit. I was just telling these guys that. I'll sit at home not to lose a fucking parking spot. Like, if it's between me losing this parking spot or me coming, I'll stay home. And Especially, like, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Those motherfuckers double up on my block. Once you leave, I don't even know where these cars come from. It's like they pop from the ground up or some shit. Right. Well, I, 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 when I didn't have a parking spot in my place, I would never... I would never, ever leave. I don't know how you do it sometimes. I don't know how the fuck I do it. But I had a great weekend. I went to Portland, Oregon. How was it? Fucking shows were great, man. I got to tell you, I lived in the Pacific Northwest, and it's always had this little cool feeling to it, the Pacific Northwest. You know, Portland has really got it down. You know what? Portland reminds me of the old Houston comedy scene, like that people were involved in it. Like the, the, the people went to bars and spoke about the guy performing. They didn't know his name. Just go down there and watch him. Portland has that feel to it. They don't need to know who you are or what TV show you're on or none of that bullshit that comes with comedy. We heard you were funny. We're going to come down here and check you out. You know, everybody brought me reefer and joints and fucking some guy brought the Russian kid, brought blueberry cake that was just brown from the THC. And I gave it out to the staff on Friday night and everybody got ripped. I came the next day and the the manager's like, you can't be giving that shit out to my (laughs) workers here. Because the one girl was on the floor sleeping back there, so it was... Uh, Did you ever hear from the convenience store worker who you gave the gummy to? You gave the Gumis Hermanos gummy to, like, this poor lady? Oh, no, no, <laughs> I haven't gone over there. I haven't gone over there to the to the spot. I'll go over there. To, tomorrow, i got to meet somebody there for coffee, so I'll see you then. But it was just a great weekend, and I really like Portland, and uh, I want to thank everybody who came out. I want to thank Lisa, who left me uh, a little present for my daughter she left me a beautiful little like uh, princess dress and a cute little shirt and I want to always thank uh, Greg and Lynn for always uh, they dropped off some medibles and whatnot so it was pretty nice well it's really cool uh, We are, our guest is Rudy Sarzo and you guys were talking before about Vegas it must be really cool when you're like you guys travel for a living for a living and it must be really <clears> cool but I don't travel to... Rudy travel Rudy got some freaking motherfucking plier miles back <laughs> But you get to go to like different cities and like get like go there a lot and get to know people and it must yeah be you know it, 
It depends on the band. Like uh, when I was playing uh, with Blue Oyster Cult, that was the, the last band that I was doing a lot of a lot of uh, weekends. You know, you, which actually do make sense in today's climate, musical climate. The fact that if you can play Thursday through Sunday and go home on Monday and you know fly back out again on Thursday, you're fine. Because you know if you're going to be playing any uh, Tuesday to Wednesday, they're going to be shed holes. You know, there, there's those gigs that you're just doing because you, you know, because if you don't play, you're going to be on the road, staying in hotels. You know, there's going to be a tour bus to pay for. There's going to be the crew to pay for. So you just want, it's, it's like a shark. you got to keep it moving. So, it, you know, so a band is the same thing. So if you take too many days off on the road, you start losing money. So my preferred way of touring, unless it's like, you know, a real, you know, high-end type of band, is actually just to do weekends. Because that, you know, those are, those are the prime gigs. Those are the, the, uh, the B, uh, A market, and, uh, you know, or B market. And actually the B market is what I consider now playing casinos. Because when you go into a small town, all of a sudden you realize that there's a casino right down the street. And it's actually one, one, of, one of the best gigs out there. You know. Do you do the same uh, location for the entire weekend, or do you go into an area and go like an hour away each day? No, I've actually done those. The uh, the residence, you know. Um, okay. I, I I had a gig in in uh, Las Vegas about five years ago. It was called Monster Circus. On the uh, we, actually, we were right after Barry Manilow on that Elvis theater, you know, in the at the Hilton, and uh, I loved it. I loved it because you know you just get up there and. You're staying at the hotel, you fly in. Again, it was one of those weekend things, you know, it was like from Thursday until Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. I think, yeah, Saturday or Sunday was the, uh, you know, four shows a week. And the residents just go home and, you know, have a uh, n normal life. How, now, how is touring, I was looking at you and I'm going, <clears throat> Jesus, I'm going to ask Rudy, how has touring changed in 20 years? Fuck it. I saw years. Rudy 31 years ago. Yeah. You saw him play? Yeah, thirty-one maybe, yeah. right? Eighty-three. Uh, well, actually, my first, uh, my first tour was in eighty-one, so that's like thirty-three. Eighty-one. Yeah. Eighty-one. I saw it whenever they came to April to the Palladium. Which the band? big show, uh, Ozzy. Oh, Ozzy. That's yeah, the first time yeah, I that saw was eighty-one. You played with Ozzy? Yeah. 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 Who who have you played with? Because I mean, because it's so Quiet far. Quiet Riot, said, mm -hmm. White Ozzy Snake, Osborne, Ozzy. White Snake. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Dio. Dio. And, uh, Blue Oyster Cult that I just yeah just mentioned and and who were you originally? Yeah, the Jeff Tate version of Queen's Right. Queen's Right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's it's so funny that how has it changed in thirty three years? Like when you first started with Quiet Riot, let's say, and Quiet Riot opened for Ozzy for oh no, Quiet Riot opened for somebody for a while. Did they not? Oh God, we uh, we open up for everybody from ZZ Top to Scorpions to Iron Maiden to Loverboy.